SML abandoned, Huawei and SMIC under years of escalating sanctions, now appear to have unveiled a photonic chip built without a single EUV tool. If even part of the circulating intelligence proves accurate, global AI training costs could collapse by as much as 90%, redrawing the entire compute map. This isn't another incremental node shrink that Western analysts were tracking. It is a lateral escape route, replacing electrons with light inside the chip so the old rulebook no longer applies. How could this happen under the nose of global intelligence services? The answer, according to multiple industry contacts who describe overlapping details, is a quiet multi-year or backslash and deprogram run in heavily isolated SMIC facilities. Some even whisper about tunnel fabs beneath Shanghai, where engineers iterated on deep ultraviolet lithography, the supposedly outdated DUV technology Washington allowed to slip through export controls. The genius, or audacity, is that photonic circuit patterns have very different tolerances from advanced silicon transistors. They don't require the same sub-2NM precision. DUV, combined with proprietary waveguide etching techniques, became good enough to mass manufacture photonic interconnect layers that route light pulses rather than charge carriers. Traditional chips push electrons through metal wires. Every millimeter introduces resistance, heat, and delay. Moore's law has slowed because shrinking further multiplies these parasitic effects. A photonic layer, by contrast, acts like a dense mesh of microscopic fiber channels. Data rides on photons, meeting negligible resistance, generating radically less heat, and sidestepping the hard limits of copper interconnect scaling. Leaked specification ranges talk about a single photonic wafer carrying thousands of AI-tuned cores. Even if the top-end claims, around 5,000 specialized inference units, are exaggerated, half that number would still represent a structural break in compute density. Internal test descriptions claim these cores chew through GPT-7-class queries like digital candy. A colorful phrase but one that captures the basic point. Higher throughput per watt and per dollar. Why does wattage matter? Because the silent crisis in today's AI boom is energy. Global data centers already spend tens of billions of dollars annually just on cooling, with estimates of wasted electricity exceeding $30 billion a year. When thousands of hot GPUs operate simultaneously, operators build miniature power plants around them. Early thermal snippets from Huawei's platform, again, not independently verified, describe operating temperatures colder than a Siberian winter relative to conventional silicon loads. Strip away the hyperbole and the claim is still potent. If photonic interconnects cut heat dramatically, an entire rack might deliver teraflops of training or inference performance for energy comparable to a handful of household light bulbs. That reframes AI not as a looming energy Armageddon but as a potential efficiency dividend. The strategic detonation radiates outward along three axes. First, ASML. For years, its extreme ultraviolet scanners functioned as the ultimate choke point. Without EUV, no nation was supposed to leap into the highest performance tier. Yet photonic architecture, by shifting the performance race from transistor gate dimensions to on-chip optical routing, partially bypasses the European gatekeeper. Photonic structures rely less on the ultra-precise mirrors, lenses, and photoresists that form ASML's billion-euro moat. Market chatter already points to double-digit percentage volatility in ASML's stock as investors attempt to reprice its long-term growth path. One unconfirmed trading desk note mentioned an intraday drawdown above 20% when the whispers accelerated. Whether or not those ticks hold, perception alone injures the aura of invincibility surrounding EUV. Second, AI companies. Roadmaps at Google, Meta, OpenAI, and a constellation of hungry startups assume a certain trajectory of GPU cost curves and energy budgets. If Photonic slashes training expenditure by even 50%, never mind the upper 90% scenario, parameter counts can inflate aggressively without triggering CFO panic. Some sources claim Western groups are already exploring licensing arrangements or joint ventures to secure limited access a remarkable reversal after years in which Chinese firms begged for Western hardware. The long-term intellectual property winner in this inversion would be Chinese patent pools, not Silicon Valley consortia. Third, global energy geography. Compute gravitates to cheap, coolable electricity. If a photonic cluster drastically lowers both direct consumption and cooling overhead, 
the calculus of where to build data centers changes. Reports suggest Microsoft's Azure team and other hyperscalers have quietly scouted sites in Mumbai and Johannesburg. BRICS markets positioned to negotiate early supply deals. A shift of high-end AI workloads toward such regions could accelerate a broader strategic realignment. Geopolitics compounds the commercial shock. Circulating documents in intelligence channels speak of provisional pre-orders or framework agreements totaling perhaps $300 billion across Brazil, India, Saudi Arabia, and other BRICS or near BRICS states. Even if the headline number folds in multi-year service commitments and capacity options rather than firm purchase orders, the signal is loud. An emerging coalition is willing to bankroll a parallel supply chain outside the sanction perimeter. For Washington, this raises a brutally simple policy fork. Ban import of all Chinese photonic hardware, effectively sentencing domestic AI firms to a slower, hotter cost base while foreign rivals accelerate. Or admit Huawei's components under some regulatory carve-out, a symbolic concession that the embargo wall has cracks. Neither path is comfortable. Defense-oriented analysts fear that letting photonic modules into U.S. clouds could embed opaque firmware or optical side-channel risks. Economic strategists warn the opposite scenario. Denial pushes venture capital and research talent to jurisdictions where photonic capacity is available. In private briefings, according to one DC contact, the phrase no clean win circulated repeatedly. NVIDIA, the poster child of the current AI cycle, reportedly saw pre-market sell pressure in the early rumor window. Intel's heavily subsidized Ohio fab plans now face questions about strategic payback if their target performance per what baseline is leapfrogged before first output. Yet caution is necessary. Spectacular narratives attract clicks, but manufacturing physics enforces its own discipline. Photonic chips still confront difficult, unsolved tasks. Low-loss coupling between optical and electronic layers, packaging complexity, alignment tolerances at scale, and perhaps most underrated, the software ecosystem. CUDA did not appear overnight. Compilers and frameworks optimized for optical pathways will require time and talent. Western consortia, from U.S. national labs to European photonics institutes, are not asleep. Subsidy proposals already circulating in Brussels and Washington Envision accelerated funding for domestic silicon photonics hybrids. ASML itself is reportedly exploring a Hail Mary hybrid platform attempting to graft photonic routing onto their existing EUV process windows, hoping to preserve relevance through integration rather than outright competition. The risk for ASML is pace. Huawei's next-generation photonic design, codenamed Phoenix, in some briefings, is rumored to target clock-equivalent optical throughput, equating to roughly 3.0 THz by Q1 2026. If that roadmap holds, incremental hybrid prototypes may forever chase a moving target. Follow the economic logic forward and a migration scenario becomes plausible. BRICS-linked jurisdictions with friendly regulatory regimes, abundant power infrastructure, and early photonic supply contracts offer a double discount lower capital expenditure per unit of compute and lower ongoing energy bills. As capacity clusters there, complementary industries, model training services, AI security auditing, sovereign dataset curation follow. Each relocation reinforces the gravitational pull away from traditional U.S.EU hubs. Over a decade, that could translate into a transfer not merely of revenue but of algorithmic influence. The subtle advantage enjoyed by those who iterate fastest with the cheapest experimentation cycles. For the United States, the window for a coordinated response narrows. One strategy is aggressive domestic acceleration. Fast-track funding for university, industry photonics labs, expedite permitting for advanced packaging plants, and craft an export control regime that limits secondary diffusion without isolating allies. Another is coalition diplomacy folding India or Saudi Arabia more tightly into U.S. tech ecosystems to dilute Chinese leverage over the photonic supply chain. But each month that Huawei ships functional product pushes the Overton window of what is considered normal dependence. Delay converts reversible disadvantage into structural lock-in. So does this mean ASML is instantly obsolete and Western AI leadership dead? Not necessarily. Early markets are littered with overpromised revolutions. Yields could disappoint, 
performance claims might shrink under independent benchmarking. Security audits may reveal vulnerabilities. Nevertheless, the direction of travel matters as much as destination. Photonics offers a credible pathway around the choke points carefully engineered during the last half decade of sanctions. Even partial success erodes the leverage value of controlling EUV exports.